Lee, bruv, this this sin bin stuff, bro. Um, shout out Saeed and Big Steve as well, because I was watching their show yesterday. And bro, and Steve said something which is a hundred percent spot on, bro. Like these guys, these guys, yeah, trying to trying to police grown men now. Imagine you get Simbin for swearing at the referee as a grown man. It's just it's like, bro, so that man can't swear no more. And th this is the way society's going, bro. I'll be real. Because even on YouTube, them men are talking about if men are swearing too much, then you can get strikes and all these other things. It's like these men are trying to sanitize, just sanitize everywhere to the point where no one's allowed to have any opinions that aren't, that aren't, um, aren't in tune with the masses, bro. Yeah, you can't swear. That's yeah, it. That's, that's it. They're just trying to, they're just trying to literally have a bunch of opinion opinionless, genderless creatures, blood. You know them ones there. Like man are just gonna be things, bro. We're not even gonna be there's gonna be no man, there's gonna be no woman, there's gonna be no opinions. Everyone's just gonna be one thing, bruv. Yep, mate, this 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 um sin bin crap, bro, all that's gonna do is slow the game down. Mm. Even more than it is. Yeah, look how look how often the ball is in play already. I think it's an average we're already having an average of like eight minutes added time every game. Yeah, now what happen is, yeah, that people are just pissed around until they get their player back on. Mm. Yeah, so you're going to see less football. Yes. <laughs> because if, if somebody gets sent off or sent to the sin bin, now you're down to 10 men. Yeah, mm. what if you've already had a player sent off? Mm. Yeah, now you're down to nine men for 10 minutes. Yeah, people are just going to muck around with this, man. Take it into the corner, do all the dark arts, rolling around even more. Yeah, mm. Just leave the game alone, man. Just mm. leave it alone. There's no need to bring that in. How about just actually do your jobs? And the thing is, yeah. it's another excuse to um, take accountability away from the football clubs. Yeah. Because now it'd be another talking point as to why your football team didn't win anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He right. shouldn't have got the sin bin. How comes he got the sin bin and that one didn't? They both did the same. Same with this VAR crap, bro. Yeah. It's just leave it alone. Like, yeah. There's no need for VAR at all. Yeah. Just let the refs ref the game. Because they're basically doing the same thing with refs, yeah. But they're sat in the in a room, mm. yeah. So you're just taking the accountability away from the guy in the middle of the pitch and putting it upstairs in a in a in a room. Yeah, like, just leave it alone. The only thing that should be in football, right, is the um, goal line technology. Yep. That's it. Goal that's line it. technology, or, or did the ball go out of play? That's it. But that's, that's what it. I mean. Or you just give both teams challenges, bro. And if you want to challenge a decision. You should have a certain number of challenges. That's it. So if you think it was a handball and the ref ain't given it, you can say, cool, I want to use one of my challenges. And then they can check it. That's it. Yeah. Like, not everything needs to be checked, bro. If the lino don't flag, then the lino don't flag. Mm. You know, it's like that. That's goals, it. it? Like, yeah. and it's, it's supposed to be clear and obvious offsides and that. Yeah. Bro, bro look, how, look how close some of these offsides are. That ain't clear yeah, and obvious. They're a joke. Like, they're so not clear and obvious that even when we look at it back on the screen when it says offside, it still don't look offside. Yeah. Yeah, when they put the, the, the red or green yeah. line on. when they put yeah, the yeah. line, it still don't look offside. So if it don't look offside in a still, yeah, then it's not clear and obvious. Yeah, facts. facts it's bro. not clear and obvious. And this, and this is the problem. Of, there's loads of things like that, though. It's like, it's like red card decisions and that. And like, mm. you know, and, and the thing is, I don't understand how they can not VAR a yellow card. Mm. Like, how can they not VAR a yellow card? How can they not changer. VAR whether it went like, because you know when it goes out for a corner, yeah. yeah, but it shouldn't have been a corner. Yeah. yeah and they've just messed up. Why can't that be VAR? Mm. Yeah, because it, it will be if the goal comes off of the back of it. Yeah, so yeah. they whip the corner in and you score, then they'll do it. But yeah. that changes the whole flow of the game because now that team, the attacking team has still got the ball. They can take a short corner, they can keep possession for another minute or so. Yeah, or they whip it in, yeah, it gets cleared, and then they score a screamer after that, then they probably won't check it. Because now that's three or four phases down the road. But this is uh, the problem. It's like, how do you decide, yeah, when that bad decision has influenced the game? How do you decide how far back to go with VAR? Because even if it's a different phase, that doesn't mean that it hasn't influenced um the goal or the result. Do you know what I mean? It still has. Do you know what I mean? And what do we get to do? We get to review the sin bins as well. Like, what are we doing? That yeah, it's mad.
Like, it's like, bad. what are we doing? What are we doing, bruv? The whole thing's weird, bruv. And what happens if the goalkeeper gets sin binned? Then what happens? Are you allowed to bring on another? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Because the goalkeeper's w waste time as well. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So if he's wasting time, yeah, that could be a yellow card. If he's wasting time a second time, they might say, right, well, you're going on the sin bin for 10 minutes instead of a second yellow. Yeah, and then what happens? Then, then what? So one of the outfield players have to um, put on the goalkeeper shirt or... Could you or what are you gonna have to sub on a goalkeeper for 10 minutes or something? You can't do that. Do you know what I mean? Because it's not rolling subs. So what do you do? Like the game's in a bin, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? Because you know they're not gonna sim bin goalies, they're not gonna do that. So oh, 100 percent And the thing is, they, even if goal... they did sim bin a goalkeeper, let's say they sim binned him with five minutes to go. <laughs> mm. <laughs> five minutes to go, and there's only three minutes of stoppage time. Yeah, what happens mm. to the other two minutes? Yeah, what happens to the other two? There's so many grey areas with this. It's crazy. Just leave it alone. Yeah. Just leave the game. Why are you putting another card in the system? Like, mm. It's baffling, bro, honestly. But this is what they do. They're just like, then these people have got so much power. You know, they just get bored, innit? Yeah. So they're but just like, exactly oh, we're up the rules that don't need to be there. Bro, it's just another way, yeah, for people outside of football, outside of the actual players, yeah, to influence the game. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because these VAR people are influencing the game. They're influencing the results. And now this sin bin thing gives another gives referees now another way of influencing a game. Because if they say to a referee now, all right, cool, we want we want Liverpool to win this game. But right, we need to just sin bin a couple of the players, make it eight versus ten for ten minutes. Yeah, they concede other team concedes three goals and then they get their players back. <laughs> like, bro, it's the easiest way to cheat, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like sending a man off, but not sending a man off, bro. It's going to be easier to give out blue cards than red cards because it's temporary. So the amount yeah. of times you see some dodgy red cards with two stupid yellows, now you can just give a blue card. Mm. Let, let, let's say, for example, Tottenham are top of the league, right? And um, Man City are going for the title with them, for example, mm -hmm. yeah? Right? But Arsenal, yeah, um, Arsenal are playing Man City. Yeah, last day of the season. Yeah, they're both tied on points and all of that, right? Arsenal could just go, yeah, cool. We'll, we'll just take three three Simbins then. Yeah, Tottenham ain't winning the league today. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> it is, isn't it? No, it's true. You could just go out there and influence the game that way. Yeah, yeah, we'll just take three Simbins. We'll just swear at the ref a couple of times, get three players, two or three players sent in the Simbin. Yeah, Man City gun bag. Job done. Tottenham ain't won the league. <laughs> like, it's so easy to manipulate. And the thing is, when there's no people... proof, you can't prove that that, that they got um, Simbin on purpose. You can't prove it. Yeah, facts. How many times do players swear at refs? All the time. Do you exactly. know what I mean? It, it's a very normal thing. What, would they do that for taking forever to take a throw in? Because Ben it's White true. takes an eternal to take a throw in, bro. He's it's true. Him, like, That's what in. I mean. When the goalkeeper gets booked for time wasting, instead of booking him, what you're just going to Simbin him? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or what? Do you sim bin someone for diving? Like, what do you do? Like, I don't understand. Like, how do you decide what's a second yellow and what's a blue? Do you know what I mean? Or what's a yellow and what's a blue? Do you know what I mean? It comes down to interpretation. So then you're still getting referees influencing games. And you're still getting different decisions for the same thing in each game. Because one man's right. interpretation of that is going to be different to the next person's. <laughs> Just leave it alone. Do you know what they should do? Right? If they're going to keep VAR in the game, which it quite clearly is, yeah. what they should do is just mic up the ref, yeah, mic, mic up the people in the studio, so when we get the footage three weeks later when they're apologising... We can just, hear everything. We can hear it live on TV, how they've come to that decision. Mm. Yeah, So you can hear the conversations they're having. Yeah, I'll just, yeah. Michael Oliver, for example. Yeah, Michael, I think you might want to go and check that one, mate. Yeah, possible handball, it, um, it's not a goal, blah, blah, blah maybe go and have a look at yourself like but then you know that's what the thing saying. about rugby you know what's going on when you watch rugby um shout out Saeed in the chat you can see um you can hear what the, the ref clearly explaining to the players this is why we've given this same with basketball to be honest you can see it they speak right into the camera and they say so and so touched his arm here to the line whatever like we know what it is and you can actually see what they're watching so there's an explanation these guys uh, they've got main character syndrome, a lot of these officials, and it's getting to the point where, like, we know the names of all the referees we don't like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we shouldn't know the name of these refs, bro. When I was growing up, I didn't know the names of the refs, bro. 
My big, big, big up Anthony Taylor, man. He's, he's the Arsenal ref. He won two <laughs> cup finals. The man beat Liverpool the other day. <laughs> he said big to Moses off the second yellow for diving in the cup final. <laughs> it's, it's awful, man. Do you know what I mean? It's awful. And then these men are like, oh, yeah, I'll get death threats and this, that, and the other. It's like, bro, if you just stayed I in the background... Well, it? Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If you stayed in the background, you wouldn't get these things. I'm not saying that... <laughs> I'm not saying that it's right, but I'm saying, yeah, you put yourself in the limelight. You know the what thing I'm is saying? that one when he was um when it was the Europa League final. Yeah, that, they blamed that on Jose because Jose mm. waited in the car park, walked up to him and told him he was a prick or something. Yeah, yeah and then obviously they were bombarding him in, at the airport, wouldn't they? All the Roma fans and that. And yeah. It's like, yeah, you shouldn't have to go through that, but don't be blaming Jose for that. Yeah, he blatantly messed up that game. Yeah, he, yeah, he did. He did, he did. That game. Yeah, and yeah. Saying, Jose's a is, human being. He's going to stay there. He's got an opportunity to play it again. It's not like it's two legs. Yeah. Like, you know, he'd probably still have his job if he'd won that. <laughs> Enjoy like, it. Yeah, it's mad, but there's no accountability. There's no accountability in football full stop, really. Like, the players don't get any accountability from the fans, really. Yeah, and then the managers don't get any accountability from the fans. Yeah. yeah they might do from the owners every now and again, like, by getting sacked and stuff like that. But it's all about VAR and the refs, the refs. Every week, I see it every week. Bro, you see it every week, yeah? Every single week, the conversation is about VAR and the refs messing up. Yeah, yeah so that takes all accountability away from the clubs not winning anything. Yeah, you shouldn't have. We all know that VAR is trash for everyone. Yeah, we know the refs are trash for everyone. And yeah, they maybe do have slight favourites in terms of players. Like, for example, Granite Xhaka would get booked for saying that Kevin De Bruyne wouldn't. Mm. Yeah, like because it's Granite Xhaka and he's done it before. Like Paul Scholes used to get away with flipping murder against us, mate. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Paul Scholes. Paul, he's Paul Scholes his whole his whole career. There was this tag that he can't tackle, bro. When in reality, he was just a dirty player, bro. Like, it's not that he <laughs> couldn't tackle, bro, because Paul Scholes' tackles weren't tackles. He was swiping at man's ankles, just kicking them. He weren't even trying to play the ball. Do you know no. what I mean? And they would say, oh, yeah, like, Paul Scholes, he can't tackle and that. Fair enough, Scholes, he was a striker growing up and that. And he's not a natural tackler, but he wasn't even trying to win the ball most of the time. Do you know what no. I'm saying? But because he was small in stature... He didn't really speak and he had this kind of timid demeanor. He got away with absolute murder. But this perception that he couldn't tackle is a myth. He just, brother, he weren't interested, bro. He was kicking no, he people. Yeah, and he was doing it on purpose. He was yeah. doing it on purpose. 100%. Yeah. But that's the thing. If VAR is trash for everyone, the refs are trash for everyone. We all know that. Yeah. yeah then why rely on the refs and VAR to win football matches? But now mm. there's this culture in football where. If you don't win a football match, you blame the ref, you blame a decision, you blame the you blame the VAR. Yeah, how about blame the managers and the players? Yeah, because mm. yeah, if you get done in the last minute, I get it. You know, if you get done with a dodgy one in the last minute, fair enough, cool. But if you're mm. getting done with a decision and you've still got 75, 80, 60 minutes, whatever it may be, left of the game, <laughs> you've got time to turn it around, didn't it? Yeah, I yeah. understand momentum's a thing. Yeah, so that'll give the other team momentum, then they'll sit back a little bit more, make themselves harder to beat. Just find a way. Yeah, there was none mm. of this crap. Bro, refs have been trash for the entire time I've watched football. Yeah. yeah. Like, they always make mistakes. They're humans. They're going to. But now we've got this technology in place, they're still making the mistakes. It's because it's, again, run by humans that will make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And everyone's perception on a foul or a yellow card or a red card or whatever is different. Yeah. And people yeah. say, well, it shouldn't be because the rules of the game, the laws of the game and that. But like, I've seen some, like, which player was it? Was it Kufal? I think Kufal got sent off for a straight red, or was it a Brighton player last season? Straight red, he won the ball, bruv. Oh, yeah. Listen, I've been seeing it, bro. I've been seeing it, bro. Loads of players have won the ball and got straight red cards, bro. That's what I mean. The game's gone. The mm. game's gone, and certain players will get targeted. And that's what I mean about Casemiro, bro. Like, look at the kind of player Cass is. And this guy never got sent off in La Liga, which is seen as a softer league than the Premier League. And this guy's getting sent off for Man United. I think he's been sent off three times already, like in the Premier League, for challenges that are not red cards, bro. One of them, he grabbed up a guy, got sent off for it because he was defending Anthony. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, what are we talking about, man? Yeah, like, but even that, guy, the guy he got sent off for grabbing, grab Anthony up or grab somebody yeah, ex else. Well, exactly. But that's what I'm trying to say. Who did he that's do a tackle on? Was it Kane? Was it Kane he did a tackle on? And no, I think it was. I think it was against Wolves when he got, I think he got sent off. He won the ball. And even the guy that he tackled, when he saw him get sent off, he was like, to the ref, nah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he apologised to him after he got sent off. Like, he apologised to Cass because he was like, yeah, that won a red card. 
Like, bro, this mm. is where the game is. So players like Casemiro are going to be getting simbined every week, bro. Mm. Mate, I, I watched um, that friendly yesterday, um, Al Halal against Al Nasir. That woman mm. ref in that game was quality. Absolutely quality, mate. There, maybe get some of these foreign refs over it. Maybe do that. Yeah. Said, said this for years. Maybe switch refs because it's all too friendly in the Premier League. They're all buddies mm. with each other. Like they all call each other their nicknames over the VAR. Like when the audio gets released, like they're calling them their nickname and that. Bro, come on. Like, yeah. What's that all about? Go and get a load of Italian refs over here this weekend and send I the don't English know one. Them. Yeah, and then just keep switching refs. Yeah, like, I, I think that that way you'd you'd have you'd have a better set of refs, like in general, right. because it'd make the English refs better because they're going to a foreign league. Yeah, yeah. so they'd understand different types of play. They had different phases of play and different perceptions yeah plus what you could do as well is you could just bring the english refs to italy and the italian refs to it uh to england but keep the var yeah for a couple of weeks or a month so you have all the four four english guys in this in the studio or whatever it is yeah, they're english you have them work for one month in england then they're going to do one month in spain yeah mm -hmm. but then you get the spanish refs for one week italian refs for one week within that month yeah so then they all build up a rapport with each other but then they'll mm -hmm. learn in the var room oh actually the Italian and Spanish refs think this is slightly different to that, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and I mm. think it increased it increased the levels miles because right now all I'm seeing every week is just dead decisions, bruv. And it takes it takes an eternity to decide to clear offside. Yeah, like that that game and yesterday, then, and then it's still not clear. Yeah, but like that game yesterday, that that woman ref, two, the two linos were women as well, and I think the fourth official was a geezer. Yeah, they were class, man, and then the. The way they did their offside decisions there, because there was a few yesterday, instant, instant, within seconds, bro. Yeah, like none of this, like, oh, let's take 16 hours, draw all the lines on the screen. None of that crap. It was done in seconds. Yeah. So why don't they do that here? Makes no sense. No, no, 100%. That's what they need to do. They need to mic up these refs. And they need, and since the refs want to be involved so much, interview these frauds after the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Interview them after the game and let make them explain themselves. Do you know what I mean? Make an ass of themselves on, on national television. Go and explain to us why you made that decision. Yeah, if they you know want to be the superstars, mate, they'd come out and do an interview, innit? it? That's it. Do you know what I mean? And if you don't want to do an interview, then don't be a ref, bruv, because they're the guys, yeah. Um, they they're absolutely not held accountable. They influence mm. decisions of games and there's no accountability, bro. So we need them mic'd up and then we need them to explain themselves after the game. That's what we need because now they're interviewing footballers pitch side and that there's no reason why you can't interview the referee.